We are going to be discussing the femur. We're looking at an anterior view of a right femur. Now we know we're looking at an anterior view. If you look distally, you see this smooth area right here. This is where the patella will sit during life, and the patella, you know, is your kneecap, so that has to be anterior. So we know we're looking at an anterior view here. Also, the femoral head, or the head of the femur, has to be oriented medially in order to articulate with the acetabulum of the coxal bone. So that way, you know you're looking at an anterior view, and because this is medial, this has to be a right femur. Okay, so let's discuss a few of the important landmarks of the femur. As we were just discussing, the femoral head is going to be oriented medially. During life, it is completely covered with articular cartilage, except for in the, the fovea region right here. So the rest of this large ball is going to be covered with articular cartilage during life. So it fits very snugly within the acetabulum, which has a lot to do with the stability of the hip joint. Okay, Ex continuing distally, this pinched in area right here is referred to as the neck of the femur. There is a considerable amount of strain in this area. And because of that, and also because this is a weaker area of the femur, this is a common site of fractures especially in bone that's been weakened by osteoporosis. So a lot of times when you hear the term hip fracture, this is a misnomer, and generally it would indicate a fracture in the neck of the femur. You also have the medial femoral circumflex artery that's going to be around this area, so if you have a fracture there, that can affect that vasculature. Okay, now we're going to discuss the trochanters of the femur. The trochanter, that term, is specific to the femur. You do not have trochanters anywhere else in terms of the skeletal system. But basically all it is is a tuberosity or a mounding of bone, just a larger one than you have in other areas of the skeleton. The greater trochanter, as its name would indicate, is larger than the lesser trochanter. It's going to be opposite to the head. So that means that the greater trochanter is going to be lateral. This is going to be the insertion site for the gluteus medius and other hip rotators. In order to see the lesser trochanter, we have to flip to a posterior view of the femur. And you can see, projecting posterior medially, the lesser trochanter. And as the name would indicate, it's going to be smaller than the greater trochanter. This is going to be the insertion site for the common tendon of the psoas major and iliacus muscles, the iliopsoas muscle. Now, continuing to look at the posterior view, extending a good amount of the body or the shaft of the femur, you will have this vertical ridge of bone. This is going to be especially prominent in the middle third portion of the shaft. This is going to be the insertion site for the AD ductor group of muscles, the adductor group. Okay, now we're going to focus on the distal end of the femur. Similar to what you had in the humerus, you're going to have a medial and a lateral epicondyle. So the medial is right here. The lateral is over here. And a way to be able to orient yourself in terms of which one's medial and lateral, we know the femoral head is medial, so this has to be the medial epicondyle. We know the greater trochanter is lateral, so this has to be the lateral epicondyle. The medial epicondyle is going to be the attachment site for the tibial collateral ligament. Sometimes you'll hear this referred to as the medial collateral ligament. Whereas the lateral epicondyle is going to be the attachment site for the fibular collateral ligament or the lateral collateral ligament. We've already discussed the patellar surface, the smooth area on the anterior surface. In order to see the condyles of the femur, it's easiest to see this in a posterior view, or they're much more prominent. This is going to be your medial condyle. 
and this will be your lateral. So the same as how you're figuring it out in terms of the epicondyle, the medial is going to be on the same side as the humeral head, the lateral will be on the same side as the greater trochanter. These are going to articulate with the menisci and the tibial condyles of the tibia in order to form the knee joint.